And the Catholic University of America rescinds an honorary degree it gave Cardinal McCarrick. The school says in a statement, quote, the entire Catholic University community offers our prayers and pastoral support for the survivors that they and their families encounter healing and peace. It is the first time the Washington, D.C. school has taken back an honorary degree. Joining me now is Mary Rice Hassan, director of the Catholic Women's Forum at the Ethics and Public Policy Center. Mary, welcome back to the program. Thank you very much. Bishop Edward Scharfenberger of Albany, New York, wrote this. He sent a pastoral letter to his priests about this McCarrick incident, scandal, and wrote, many of our faithful are now feeling betrayed and abandoned by their spiritual fathers, especially the bishops. Catholics are wrestling with how to respond to this abuse of power. What do you see as the essential steps needed to bring about a true spiritual reform? Spiritual reform is really the answer. And I think one of the issues, one of the reasons why Catholics are angry and not just feeling betrayed, but are angry with the response and sort of the lack of accountability is because the first statements acknowledging this talked about the need for procedures, the need for uh, bishops to be held accountable and reporting mechanisms, but the problem is far deeper. And that's what was wonderful to see in Bishop Schellenberger's statement. Only a handful of bishops have spoken out mm -hmm. publicly. I spoke to Bishop Michael Ose Olson of Fort Worth, Texas yesterday, mm -hmm. and he said that the answer is prayer and work. Mm -hmm. Does the scandal put the moral credibility of the bishops in jeopardy if it is not resolved forcefully and quickly? Oh, I think it's already in jeopardy. I, I really do. And I think that's because there was a chance in 2002 for this to be addressed in terms of the reporting of bishop mis misconduct. But again, the problem is deeper. There's a question of how much active homosexuality is going on among the clergy and how the bishops are going to deal with that. You're talking about the Promise to Protect Pledge to Heal document that was created in 2002 after the sexual abuse crisis mm -hmm. from that time. And in it, the bishops were not um, held accountable. Right. They, they exempted themselves from those requirements. And that's in the past. That's what they did, and that was, that was in error. But the problem since then has been not just a failure to comply with, with some mechanism that wasn't created, but it's deeper than that. It's an atmosphere of tolerating misconduct, of knowing that some of their brother bishops are perhaps not living up to uh, not just their promises, but are abusing their power and abusing minors and failing to correct. And it's that willingness that we need to see on the part of the bishops to correct each other, that spirit of fraternal correction and that call to holiness. It creates doubt in the minds of many that we are, the church is, effectively addressing this catastrophe. Reasonably. You know, I, I think it's reasonable for people to wonder because the procedures that were put in place in 2002 for the reporting of abuse of minors by clergy were good procedures and those have worked. But again, you see the problem of the bishops exempting themselves, but that doesn't get to the whole problem because we know from the stories and the settlements that occurred around Cardinal McCarrick, the problem is deeper. It's abuse of power relating to seminarians and it's just simply a disregard of that vow of celibacy. Mary Rice Hassan, director of the Catholic Women's Forum at the Ethics and Public Policy Center. Always a pleasure to have you. Yeah, Thank it's you. It's great to be here.